Hey everyone, thanks for joining me. So I want to walk you through a new template update which is going to be released maybe later on today, maybe tomorrow, um, but it'll definitely be before Christmas. And this is an update to the East West Hollywood Orchestra Diamond template. So if you've purchased the template bundle from poundsound.uk or you purchased the individual diamond template, then this will be a free update for you. Uh, and you will get an email with your download link sent to you. So be sure to check your spam box for when I do release it as well. Um, ultimately, if you didn't receive or don't receive uh, the, the email update, just pop over to poundsound.uk. You can either use the contact form to get in touch or you can use the, uh, the new online chat feature. At the bottom right, you'll see like a little pop-up box uh, and you can either log in with your Meta account or you can just use it as a guest uh, and leave me a message. But be sure when you do, just tell me what email you used to purchase uh, your product previously so I can check the database and then I'll send resend you like your confirmation email to you don't leave me phone numbers don't leave me like whatsapp numbers and stuff like that because it's just it's not very helpful it's just much easier if you just leave me your email and I can check uh, and send it to you with that out the way let's um, take a look at what's been fixed what's been changed and what's been added um, in, in no particular order. So let's first of all start off with what's been added to the template. And um, one of the most requested things was the orchestrator. Um, so I can confirm now happily that every single patch inside of the orchestrator has been now added into the project. Um, so first of all, let me show you how I've done this because it's in two separate ways uh, I've added it in. Um, now, with the orchestrator open here, in the preset browser in, under the ensembles tab, um, there's long and short patches for the strings, winds, brass. And then there's also the percussion tonal and non-tonal. Now, all of these have been organized and added into the templates in a separate way um, compared to all of the full ensembles, the ostinatos and scores. So let me first show you how these have been added. So in the main section folders for your winds, brass, strings and percussion, you'll now see a, a new set of subfolders above key switches called Orchestrator. Um, so HWW is Hollywood Winds and then Orchestrator. So all of the long and short Orchestrator patches for the ensemble winds are here. And then it's the same story for the, um, the brass and the strings and the percussion. Each one of these is routed to its own bus, which can be found in the subgroups folder down here. So in the woodwinds folder, you'll see the orchestrator winds bus at the top, and again, brass at the top for the brass one and strings. And then these buses are then routed to uh, the respective master groups. So these will be exactly the same as all the other instrument bosses that are here. So this will go to the main woodwinds, uh, you know, this will go to the main brass, etc, etc. Now for the other patches in the orchestrator, the full ensemble stuff, uh, the ostinatos and scores, these have all been organized into their own dedicated orchestrator folder at the top of the project. So um, here is the folder. If we open this up, you'll have all of the subfolders inside. So we have the full ensemble stuff here, and then all of the ostinatos have been organized into separate folders respective of, of their BPM, uh, and the same story for the scores as well. Now, I have thought about organizing this in a different way, and um, I'll let you guys get back to me on that one after you start working with the template and see how you feel about it. Um, I, I understand that having a lot of folders is not ideal sometimes, and um, I have thought about actually tagging um, the instrument track names with the BPM and then just having them all in one scores folder or one Astonatos folder. Um, but again, I'll, I'll let you guys decide uh, through using the template how you feel about that. And if everybody would like that to be changed, then I can change that in the future. It's not a problem at all. Now, with the routing for these, um, there are three buses that have been created to control each section. So these can be found in a folder here in the subgroups, and it's a brown folder called Orchestrator, in brackets full, ostinatos, and score. 
And you can see in here we have three bosses. So obviously the full ensemble one is controlling all of uh, these in the full ensembles track folder. And then ostinatos for the ostinatos and scores for scores. You get the idea. Then these three bosses have been routed to a master boss or a master group called ensembles. Pretty cool stuff. We finally got the orchestrator added in. Now, in terms of changes and fixes, um, obviously you may have already noticed one of the changes and that is to the color scheme of the project. Uh, I want to use the same color scheme across all of my templates. So I'm adopting this universal color scheme uh, where uh, woodwinds are always blue, brass is always red, strings green, percussion yellow or gold, choirs pink, synths will be in orange. And I will be making changes to the Storm Drum 3 template and also the Silk template as well uh, to bring these in alignment and make some slight changes to the way they're tagged as well. So if you do want to mix and match together my different East-West templates, they're all going to make sense and it's going to be much easier to mix and match them together, um, which is why you've probably noticed that I've uh, tagged these with sort of abbreviations for the library and also changed the main folders here just to say woodwinds, brass, strings and percussion. So if you do use track imports from projects or track presets and you drag and drop stuff in, it's going to be easier for you to, to organize it, um, you know, and it will make sense. Now, um, there have been um, some fixes to spelling errors. Um, for those of you that know me, I am a bit dyslexic, so when it comes to spelling, it's a high probability I will make, uh, miss things in a project or misspell things because, unfortunately for me, um, spelling correctors don't work inside a DAW. So, uh, yeah, um, I've done my best to go through and make sure everything is now correct, but if there is anything still I've missed, then please let me know. Um, I've also made sure that there's been corrections to the instrument tags as well. If I remember correctly, it was um, six French horns said two French horns, or it might have been the trumpets. Um, so that's been changed. And I've also used these dividers as well to, to try and further break up um, the naming scheme so it's a bit easier for you to spot things and identify things as you go along. Now, um, changes have also been made to expression maps. Um, in all honesty, when I was looking at the tracks with expression maps on and going through the expression maps again, I could have done a much better job. Uh, and um, so what I've done is gone through all of the expression maps and I've done things like add colors to the various different articulation types. So uh, legatos are green, um, longs are red, shorts are orange, effects are yellow. And then for some of the brass, like the jazz and mutes, they'll be like purple and blue. Something else to note with the expression mats that I've corrected is with for quite a few of them, um, there were um, articulations that were like organized incorrectly. So there'd be like a legato mixed in with effects. Uh, so I've gone through all the lists and moved them around and made sure they're all adhering to the same uh, hierarchy that I use in the project. And then something that I've also corrected because it because it was causing a lot of confusion was to um, update the remote keys. And before they weren't like there was nothing mapped to them, or they would have remote keys that were different to the output mapping. So to avoid any confusion, what I've done is gone through them all and map um, the remote keys to reflect what the output output mapping is. And so it should all make sense. And don't worry about having to add them to the tracks. Um, because they're already pre-applied in the project. Um, but yeah, um, the other things that have been fixed is there were a couple of expression maps where there were one or two articulations that were incorrectly mapped on the output mapping for triggering the articulation. So they've now been fixed. Um, so touch boards, everything should be okay now for you. If, if, if I have missed something, though, please let me know because... It is quite easy to miss things when you have this many <laughs> articulations to go through when you're building an expression map. I mean, it's insane, um, but it should be all okay now. The next thing I want to show you is uh, visibility configurations. These have been updated uh, in the main project and also in the mixer. Um, so if you come up to the top here, you will now have visibility configurations are nicely organized. We have tracks all, so it'll show us all the tracks in the project and folders. We have orchestrator, so if we only want to 
work with the orchestrator and look at that we can hide the other stuff and just work with the orchestrator tracks um, if we want to work with just woodwinds we can brass strings percussion and choir we have those visibility configurations now these have also been applied in the mixer um, again to make your lives easier when working with the template so we have groups all so this will show us all of these subgroups or instrument groups uh, we'll have the orchestrator groups the woodwinds brass strings percussion choirs you get the idea uh, and then we also have the at the bottom channels now, every time you activate an instrument track, it will create an audio channel in the mixer. Uh, and if you can imagine one instrument, let's say the flutes, it's got like 16 different instrument tracks, all with individual articulations on. That means it will create 16 audio channels in the mixer. If I want to control all of those at the same time, um, I could use a VCA, but VCAs don't allow you to use inserts. I could use the link channel feature, but then if I want to process it as a whole, I can't. So I sum all of them to their own instrument uh, bus uh, and that means I can process the instrument as a whole uh, and it also means that if there are some discrepancies between the articulations like maybe there's I don't know on the staccatos there's like a weird frequency that needs notching out then I can do so just by coming to the audio channels view and processing that one articulation and then going back to the main groups view to carry on working working in a general sense and this means you're only going to have this amount of channels to deal with in the mixer and not hundreds and thousands of them so it's a much more convenient way of working uh, and as always the main master groups are pinned to the right of the mixer as well so you can control the individual instruments and then the main uh, sections um, it's an easy way to work in all honesty and yeah it's it's that that's pretty much I think pretty much everything in the template in the update that I want to go over. So I can't wait to get this out in your hands and um, hopefully you guys will like the update. It will make the file size bigger. Unfortunately, for some reason with Cubase, um, even with disabled track projects, the CPR file just gets pretty big. What I'm thinking about, if you want a version without the orchestrator added in, which would be a smaller file size, I can uh, create the this the version of this update without the orchestrator in or if you want an orchestrator only version i could do that as well um but yeah let me know and i hope you again enjoy this update uh, and if i don't manage to do any videos before christmas merry christmas to you and um a happy new year as well so thank you and i will see you again <laughs>